Hello, and welcome to the Alternate History class. My name's Andrew, and here we explore alternate history through the lens of a history class from another timeline. Last week, we looked at the reign of Napoleon II. This week, we'll look at the reigns of Joseph I and his brother, Louis. We will pick up where we left off uh, with the reign of Joseph the First. As we spoke last time, he took the throne upon his nephew Napoleon the Second's death on July twenty second of eighteen thirty two. Now he had some former experience during his older brother's reign. As he served first as the king of Naples and then as the king of Spain briefly during the Peninsular Wars. Now this tie to Spain would be a bit ironic considering one of his major foreign policy was his involvement in the first Carlist War. War. Now, this would be a war between what was known as the Carlists, who wanted to put Carlos de Bourbon on the Spanish throne. They were the more conservative element in Spain, and the Cristianos, who were the more liberal uh, element of the were the more liberal element of Spain. Uh, and as he viewed himself as a liberal enlightened monarch like his brother, he would side with the Cristianos. Uh, and this would uh, ironically be the first time that the Bonapartes would ally themselves with the United Kingdom. It would not be the last, but it was a significant moment at the time. He also was known for uh, his love and fascination with the young American nation, uh, their culture, and their history, especially as it pertained to their history with France, and he would strengthen ties with the United States uh, during his reign. When it came to the domestic front, uh, he was more liberal uh, than his brother was, uh, his brother in this case meaning Napoleon, uh, as he would strengthen the legislative branch as it could now propose laws and present budgets to the emperor. Uh, although the emperor still maintained uh, full veto power, the emperor still was the one who would decide laws and could present laws to the legislative branch. And if he did, they would usually, and by usually I mean 99% of the time be passed by the legislative branch and, le and that 1% would be if the emperor decided that he did not want that law passed. Now, while his reign was not the most eventful, as you can see, what did have some important things happen during it. But unfortunately, uh, his age would catch up to him as he would die on July 28th of 
1844. And as he did not die with a male heir, as was the French custom at the time, that only males could inherit the throne, he would be succeeded by his younger brother, Louis. And Louis would style himself Louis the First Emperor of the French, although he is often sometimes referred to as Louis the Nineteenth, uh, considering that the there had been eighteen kings of France before him with the name Louis. It just depends on your personal preference, although most people in France do refer to him as Louis the First. Now, Louis's reign would end up being brief. But during his time on the throne, he would be able to establish better relations overall with other European monarchies as he was viewed as more conservative than his older brothers. Louis was most likely, although we don't know because of his short reign, uh, but he was most likely at least on the same level as Napoleon I when it came to how conservative he was. But this was something that was perceived as he had stood up to his brother uh, during his brief time as the King of Holland. And this had led to him being sent into exile uh, in 1810, where he would actually develop a relationship with the future Emperor of Austria, uh, Ferdinand I. Uh, and they became friends during this time, and that would lead to greater ties between the French and the Austrians. Now, as we said, his reign was a brief one, but he would increase those ties within Europe himself in his short period of his reign. Uh, he would die, ironically enough, as we've seen with the last few uh, in July of 1846, specifically July 25th of 1846. He would be succeeded by the man who would perhaps become the most famous of the Bonaparte emperors outside of, of course, the founder of the dynasty. Uh, and that would be his son, Louis Napoleon, who would take on the regal name of Napoleon the third and next time we will dive in to Napoleon the third and as we did back when we covered Napoleon we will dive into who he was how he came to be who he was before we dive into his reign, uh, which may take a couple of sessions due to being one of the longest reigning Bonaparte monarchs.
Thank you for checking out the Alternate History class on YouTube. If you enjoyed this week's episode, feel free to like the video. And if you want to see each video when it goes live, subscribe and hit that bell. The Alternate History class can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find podcasts. Big thank you to my patrons. If you'd like to support the show, you become a patron. And if you're in the top two tiers, you'll get a shout out at the end of each episode after you sign up. Thank you for your most important donation, your time. And I'll see you next time as we journey down the path not taken.